Our next two guests met while they were students at Southern California's Pepperdine University. On the outside, they were a picture of success, but growing up, they shared a common, troubling experience that deeply affected both of them. Lauren Paul and Molly Thompson were both victims of girl-on-girl -girl crime, or bullying, as it's more commonly known. After discovering their shared past, they decided they wanted to do something about it. Their mission is to educate girls and women about the dire impact of bullying and to work to end the cycle once and for all. Along the way, they've spoken with hundreds upon hundreds of people, and they've heard countless heart-wrenching stories, many of which sound something like this. People have told me that I, um, when I take off my contact lenses, uh, I'm the devil and that I need liposuction, yeah, and I know, don't worry, and I need liposuction, like, that was, like, that was when I was 10, uh, I was really, like, self-conscious about myself, and they said I needed liposuction, and that, like, really, like... I'm sorry. No. Lauren Paul and Molly Thompson are here to talk about the journey they took to make their documentary, Finding Kind. They're also going to share with us some of the good work the Kind campaign continues to do today. Welcome to the broadcast. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Thanks for, having, for us. having us. When you watch that, I mean, like bow suction, looks like the devil, uh, it's so raw, and you see what's so wrong with girls that age, and then you see what's so gentle and sweet, her friend hugging her and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the dynamic that's out there. I mean, you two lived it. I mean, mm -hmm. it's pretty tough stuff out there, isn't it? It really is, and it's, it's interesting, you know, going into schools with our assembly program, you hit it right on the head. We go in and we're watching girls share stories and really feel traumatized by these social experiences, but it's like a light bulb goes off when we go in and we're just like, we've all been through this, and we can unite in that universal experience and really create change together. Um, they kind of turn to that soft side, and it's um, it's incredible to see how quickly that change um, that change of thought goes, and how we see such immense healing take place. It's it's a beautiful thing that we're really proud to be a part of. Molly, talk to me about the framework. I know that you made the film. The film's kind of the centerpiece <laughs> for these assemblies, isn't it? Walk us through it. Let's say I'm a, a young girl. Suddenly, I'm in an assembly. What am I going to find? Yeah. So. When we go into schools, it's the two of us, and we go in in you know jeans and a t-shirt, which works really well because they can relate to us. You know, we're not coming in as an expert or a teacher or a counselor. We're just two young girls who were just sitting in their chairs a few years ago. So we share our stories and we let them know what we went through when we were in school. And then we screen the film, Finding Kind, which is incredibly powerful for them to watch as a group. Because oftentimes, you know, the things that they're going through are showcased up on the screen and the people that they're going through them with are sitting, you know, in a chair three rows back. So then after the film, we come out and we do these different interactive features. So we have the kind pledge, kind apology, and kind card. And even though these are just simple sheets of paper, it's truly amazing to see um, just the change that's created through girls standing up and sharing their kind pledges and telling the other girls in their room what they're pledging to do to create a kinder school environment or girls handing a kind apology to a girl three rows back and then we end it with the kind card so girls stand up and say words of affirmation to other girls who are oftentimes sitting in the room and we ended on that really positive note which at the end of it I mean there's so many times where Lauren and I are looking at each other in awe of what we're witnessing there's girls standing up and walking across the room and handing someone a kind apology and you know crying and it just starts an extremely important conversation within the school and we end it with different messages that we like to leave with the girls and um, all in all we are just so thankful that we're able to have these extremely important conversations with girls and witness this change created in the schools. Let's, uh, we're talking a lot about the film. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Let's watch a clip and then I want to talk to you about it. Let's, let's take a look. There was a girl, her name was Brenda, and she wasn't the most popular girl. She wasn't the girl that everybody was dying to hang out with. And I knew exactly where she stood. I knew her story. I knew exactly how she felt when girls would make fun of her and one day the girls got in a circle around her and were throwing insults at her and I, re 
remember looking at her after everybody was saying those terrible things and seeing her face and knowing exactly how she felt and looking at her and I don't know why, but I specifically looked at her and said, yeah, Brenda, why are you so ugly? And to this day, I will never, ever forgive myself for doing that to that girl because I know exactly how she felt. This is uh, key, just the, the pain, the layers and layers of pain that these girls go through. I mean, one of the words you used in the film that I thought was right on target is vicious, mm -hmm. but it's also sinister and methodical. And I mean, this is what goes on. I mean, mm -hmm. it's pretty horrible. It is, yeah. It's, I mean, we hear stories, you know, every day when we're in schools that would make anyone's jaw drop because um, we do. We, you know, girls put each other through really, really difficult things. But I think the question there is, well, why? You know, why are girls doing these things to each other? And what we found is typically that comes from the insecurities that every female deals with. We go into a room of middle schoolers, we go in through, into a room of, you know, at a university or, or women, and we ask the question, raise your hand if you have something that you're insecure about. And every single hand in the room goes up because we all deal with these insecurities. And unfortunately, oftentimes, they come out by you know treating other people negatively, really negatively, oftentimes, and you know thinking that that will make ourselves feel better, which is not the case. It's not the answer. Talk to me about your experience walking out of an assembly, uh, the high that you get, witnessing what you witness, and take a step back in time. When did you know you you hit a home run? I mean, you know on paper this looks good, but when you go into a classroom or assembly and afterwards, you know the two of you've got to be like this. When did you know? you'd really nailed it, you had the pieces in place, hmm. and then what's it like leaving these assemblies? It's, I just feel so fortunate to, well, for us to have been on the forefront of this conversation, mm -hmm. like I mentioned earlier, we started this before bullying was a hot topic, so recognizing that and going out and doing something about it, I'm really proud that we, you know, were aware and did something. Um, but even now, six years later, like she was saying, we walk out and every assembly has just these moments and actually on this last October tour there was a really beautiful moment that I think kind of gives perspective into how life-changing this really can be. Um, there was actually a girl who came up and shared her pledge during uh, the assembly and actually we both remember her so clearly and we were on the road to our next assembly driving like three hours <laughs> to who knows where and um, and I was going through uh, our Instagram account because we take a picture with all of the girls um, in every assembly that we do and we post it and they get really excited about going and kind of sharing their experience and I was filtering through those comments and there was this girl Rachel who shared in her comment that uh, that morning she had contemplated committing suicide and for the first time in her life she realized that that wasn't the solution and that the things that these girls were doing to her is not going to define or end her life um, and she ended that comment saying that the Kind Campaign Assembly literally saved her life. And um, I have chills. <laughs> I <laughs> do we, too. <laughs> yeah, and we, we see examples of that all the time. So, you know, to be able to, I guess, just be a part of something, you know, I know we started this, but really, truly, just to be a part of something that has that sort of effect on someone is... Like, you can't even put it into words. Well, you should be proud. That's fantastic. Thank you. That's incredible. Thank you. That's got to be a great feeling. Yeah. Well, thank you both for coming on. It's uh, yeah. terrific what you're doing. Uh, we're going to end this interview so you can go back out and do some more of it, okay? <laughs> okay. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks for having again. us. Thanks again. Coming up next, social media and the Internet are ever-present, so there's no escape for victims of cyberbullying, and bullying in its digital form is having lethal consequences.